So let's look at our next case. We have an 82 year old man with a past medical history of colon cancer who develops a substernal chest pain while raking weights. He says that the chest pain has been going on for a while. EMS arrives, he's still having the chest pain. Um, he appears diaphoretic. Vitals are pretty, pretty okay. Blood pressure or heart rate 72, blood pressure is 138 over 72, and then we get an EKG. So let's take a look at this EKG here. So what do you guys see? So that leads to the next question. Do you guys want to activate a code STEMI? Yes, no, maybe. Maybe, I like it. I like it. So let's take a look. What I love about being a cardiologist in the hospital is we always get much clearer EKGs than what you guys get in the, in the field. And that makes our job a lot easier. So this is the, e, uh, the ED uh, EKG. So let's take a look at it. It looks like for the most part, maybe a little bit bradycardic, but normal, normal sinus rhythm. Um, looking at ischemia going from top to bottom, left to right, looking at one, no changes here. Looking at two, start seeing some kind of ST depression T wave inversions, right? We see this biphasic T wave here. Um, so we know that something, something weird is going on. We look at three ST depressions right here, ST depressions and T wave inversions. Looking at AVR, pretty flat here, right? We have the T wave inversion, but otherwise we know that's normal in AVR, so nothing new there. AVL looks normal. AVF, also ST depressions, right? T wave inversions, ST depressions. Looking at V1, flat, no ST elevations. Looking at here, flat, maybe some kind of change here, but it doesn't meet that two millimeter mark that we just talked about. Three looks okay, four looks okay, five looks another biphasic T wave, and six, maybe some ST depressions. So this patient actually does not, based on this EKG, meet STEMI criteria. So what we did with him, we saw him um, in route, he got three sublingual nitrogens, and he still had chest pain. He said initially it was 10 out of 10. It got a little bit better with the sublingual nitro. He got another one, didn't really change. We started him on nitro drip in the emergency room. And same thing, chest pain got a little bit better, but it wasn't getting that much better. So one of the criteria for us from an interventional cardiology standpoint is if a patient is having continued chest pain, even when they're having, even when they're on um, nitroglycerin or getting sublingual nitro, that's very concerning for ischemia. So even though this is not actually a code STEMI, um, this is a very concerning end STEMI. So we took him to the cath lab, and this is what we saw. So once again, you don't have to know what arteries we're looking at, but you can appreciate that this artery is completely gone. So this right here was the left circumflex, and this is the LAD. So this patient had 100% occlusion of the LAD. Pushed a wire through there, placed one stent, and opened it wide open. But you can see that this person had a hundred percent occlusion of the prox LAD. So this big vessel right here, huge, with with big septals, big diags, it was not supplying a significant portion of that anterior wall. But if you look at the EKG, you only see ST depressions and T wave inversions. You'd think that someone with a massive hundred percent LAD occlusion would have ginormous ST elevations, but that doesn't have to be the case. And that's one of the important things to kind of note here is not every EKG will tell you exactly what's going on in the heart. So take the patient into account significantly because if they're having recurrent chest pain, something's going on there and we want to take a look. So this patient had 100% LAD occlusion. We opened it up. He was able to go home um, almost, I think, the next day because it was a morning case. So 